as Chelsea head coach and in a whirlwind 24 hours at the club we are imminently expecting confirmation of the former Paris Saint-Germain and Borussia Dortmund manager Thomas Tuchel as Lampard's replacement. Chelsea play Wolves at Stamford Bridge on Wednesday where Tuchel could be in charge to take his seat in the home dugout and that game is part of a full round of midweek fixtures in the Premier League with big games at both ends of the table. Chelsea are in ninth position after a run of just two league wins in eight after being top just last month. They are now 11 points off Manchester United who lead the way and five points off the Champions League places but three points against Wolves tomorrow could take them back into the top six ahead of another home match against Burnley on Sunday. Now a quick check on the bottom you can see Chelsea's next opponents there Wolves in 14th position and Burnley in 15th. Sheffield United are still rooted to the foot of the ta table 12 points from safety with West Brom and Fulham the other teams currently making up the bottom three. Well, another quiet week then in the Premier League. Plenty for us to talk about on the midweek preview. And joining me to do just that, Andy Townsend and Matt Holland. And of course, we've also got Leroy Rossini upstairs, ready and waiting with his iPad for all of your tweets. I guess mm -hmm. there could be quite a few Chelsea fans getting in touch today. If you do want to get in touch with Leroy and have your tweets read out on the show, use the hashtag PL fans and we will get through the best of them later on. So come on then, Andy. It's been a busy yeah. couple of days. <laughs> what was your initial reaction when you heard the Frank Lampard news? Um, I was just a little surprised, Kelly, after after winning the cup game. Just a little surprised so quickly off the back of that. Um, but not surprised actually at the bigger picture, at the fact that the team aren't are not in a healthy position. Um, and that Frank had looked to me from, from the sidelines, had looked a little bit... Uh, lost a little bit lately at how to cure and, and fix some of the issues that the, that the team have got. Um, you know, look, he's a, a, he was a brilliant player. I'm sure he'll go on to have a very successful managerial career. You just don't get time at that club. You just, mm. And he, know, he knew that. Well, the average length of a manager at Chelsea is 15 months. He lasted a little bit longer than that, <laughs> at 18 months. So he's not done too badly in, in that respect. He did brilliant in his first season. Transfer ban, lost his best player in Eden Hazard, was asked to bring through the young players. The young players came through uh, and he did a good job with them as well. Uh, then he was backed financially. And I think he's being judged in a different set of rules this season. His yep. first season, he, you know, his hands were tied. And he did a great job, got them into the Champions League. This season, it's slightly different. When you spend over £200 million, pounds, you're expecting to win things and you're expecting mm. to, to be challenging for the title and I think that's what Roman Abramovich expected this season and it hasn't quite happened for him. Is he a victim maybe of his success last season or do you think that whatever he'd have done last season the expectation this time would have been the same? Do you know it's, it's, it's one of those ones where let's be honest had there not been an embargo would Frank have got the job when he did? Mm. No they would probably have gone elsewhere and given it to a more high profile someone with a with a with a better CV as a coach, um, so he can be thankful in that respect that he's given the opportunity. Mm -hmm. I don't think he. I think his legacy is as as Matt says. Some very good young players have come through. Uh, the likes of Reese James in the team to stay in the team. Mason Mount, I think, I think is in the team to stay in the team. I'm not quite so sure from there. I'm not sure how Tuchel will view someone like Tammy Abraham, trying to be. Trying to, try, you know, he, he wants to get the team into the into the top four to be winning things. Will he want a, a, a striker that maybe guarantees him a bit more? Possibly, I don't know. We'll see. But I think Frank has done a a, a good job. Matt, you made a very good point about about the difference with winning the FA Cup, Mikel Arteta yeah. earlier. Well, yeah. I mean, if Frank had won that, he would have been given a little bit longer. I'm, abso I'm absolutely even, certain. Even with, the, even with the results Even this with season. the current situation. Mm. I think, well, look at Mikel Arteta's run this season. Yeah. They could easily have sacked him, but everyone's all of a sudden saying, well, actually, he's just won two trophies. Yeah. He's, mm. he's won that the Essex Cup, he's won point. the Community Shield, and, and so he's been automatically given a little bit longer at Arsenal to get things right. If Frank had won the FA mm. Cup the mm. back end of last season, I think he'd have been in the same situation. Well, let's take a look at the statement that Frank Lampard did post on his Instagram. He revealed this through the LMA as well. Classy as ever, it's been a huge privilege and an honour to manage Chelsea, a club that has been a big part of my life for so long. Firstly, I would like to thank the fans for the incredible support I've received. I hope they know what that means to me. When I took on this role, I understood the challenges that lay ahead in a difficult time for the football club. I'm proud of the achievements we made and I'm proud of the academy players that have made their step into the first team and performed so well. They are the future of the club 
He says he's disappointed not to have had the time this season, but he wants to thank Mr. Abramovich, the board, players, my coaching team and everyone else for their hard work, especially in these unprecedented and challenging times. And of course, he wishes the team and club the very best of the future. As I said then, it's classy words as we'd expect Absolutely. from Frank. A dignified exit because you don't always get that. No. We don't always get that. And I think that's a really, that, that's very typical of Frank Lampard, I think, to do things right and to do things in a manner which, again, don't forget, he's got a number of years ahead of him that he would want to coach. It won't be at his beloved Chelsea, maybe, but he wants to move forward from this point. And, and I think, again, it, that shows it, you the class he's got. It's funny, you say it won't be at Chelsea. It wouldn't surprise me <laughs> to see Frank Lampard back at Chelsea sometime in the future. If he goes away and he's successful and, and his coaching career goes well, he wins things, that Chelsea go back for him. You know, we saw would, Jose Mourinho. Would he Mourinho. go back, do you think? So, well, what? it's his club. Yeah. It's his club. I mean, he spent so many years there as a player successfully. Um, as soon as this opportunity came up, you could see he jumped at it. He relished the opportunity to, to manage Chelsea. I think if he goes away, he's successful somewhere else. And Chelsea come knocking on his door again. It wouldn't surprise it wouldn't surprise mm. me to see him back at Chelsea. Yeah, it will be interesting to see where he goes next. I know his wife's pregnant at the moment, so maybe she's quite pleased to have an extra pair of hands <laughs> yeah. around the house. And um, also the fact in Chelsea's statement that Roman Abramovich spoke. That's the first time, first time that yeah. Abramovich has put a statement in about a departing manager. That tells us quite a lot, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. I think that again, that again um, um, tells you that, and and I think the words are are very genuine. I think that. Mr. Abramovich does go on to say, doesn't he, that you know Frank is an iconic part of an iconic. Warmly Chelsea welcomed player. back as well. Will be warmly welcomed back, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. They parted on the best of terms. Um, look, he doesn't give managers an awful lot of time. He, he what he does give them is tons of money, um, and, <laughs> and that's that's it in a nutshell. You know, you you might not get the years you want, but you'll get the millions you need. And because and, of that, he expects results. And so you know, because of that, give him money. and Frank, yeah. when he took that job will have known that that's, he knows that club better than most. He will have known when he went in that that's the kind of terms and doesn't, conditions. It, it doesn't matter that he's a, a club icon, that he's had such a successful time there as a player. It doesn't matter. We've seen club icons. Roberto Di Matteo won the Champions League, lost his job yeah. not long after. So there's there's no guarantee just because you, you played for the club and you were brilliant as a player that you're going to, you know, no. transfer mm. that into management and you're going to be given a little bit longer because of that. Roman Abramovich has shown he's ruthless. He, he, you know, you have to win things, especially when he's, he's just giving you £200 million in one transfer window. Mm. You have to be successful. In it, and obviously this season, it's not quite going to plan. And the flip side of that, you can say, is it's worked for him so far, hasn't it? Look at the success Chelsea have had while he's been at the helm. Let's take a look at the results that Frank Lampard does leave with at Chelsea. These are his last 10. Obviously, we could talk. They were on a 17-match unbeaten run, weren't they, till the they end of were. December? I think that was 48 days ago that that run ended. But this, look at that, three wins in there. Results, uh, Pep Guardiola actually said it, didn't he? That if you don't get the results, you don't keep your job. And ultimately, that's what's happened. It's very true. I, I saw actually a few of those, Kelly. I actually saw a few of those. I saw the Leeds game where I thought they played very well and they looked good. Um, I, you know, I, 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 there's been a good few in there that I thought Frank had done particularly well in. Some of the ones just lately, particularly the Leicester performance was a poor one. Arsenal. I thought, Matt, wasn't it? Arsenal, I saw that one too. And... and and that was, Mikel Arteta was, was right on the cusp himself on, on, on the day that they went to, uh, to Arsenal. Um, and of course, he lost that game. And from there, it just hasn't, I'm afraid, uh, looked like that Frank's able to turn it around. It's, and it's so difficult. I actually think he's, he's had too many players, too many players to choose from. How can you not want to have a massive squad? You would want that. Every coach wants that. But I think for a young coach, I think for a young coach, I think that that when you can keep changing and you can keep chopping and you can keep searching, mm. um, it can make your life a little bit more complex and a bit more complicated. You know, when you've got yeah. just a number of players, when you can make the odd some change, managers, man, Some managers like to work with a, a smaller group. It's, yeah. it's a little bit easier to work with a smaller group. You know, and you've got to try and drag more easier, out. <laughs> and try and drag more out of them, absolutely. I think, it, yeah. I think it's harder when, you, when you've got a bigger squad like Chelsea have got, a number of players for every position, mm. trying to keep everybody happy yep. and trying to, trying to get the right formation that suits those players. And, and, and he hasn't been able to, to do that. And, and, he? and he will have been conscious of, of very much recent, in recent weeks seeing Havertz struggling. Seeing Werner struggling, yeah. knowing the investment that was made for those two in mm. particular. Yeah. I thought that when Werner missed that penalty against yeah. Luton oh, no, in the cup no. on Sunday. Yeah. And he will have been thinking, I need to play them 
because I've got to try and get something out of them. I need to take them out because they're struggling. I need, and it's, it's difficult. It's, it's, it's not easy to get that balance right. Do the players have to shoulder some of the responsibility yeah, yeah. here? Because yeah. ultimately, Frank Lampard lives or dies by how well those players do on the pitch. And he can only do so much when they go over the white line. I, I always feel when a manager gets the sack that players get away scot-free, really. Mm. He's the manager that shoulders all the responsibility mm. for, the, for the poor results at the moment. And the players do, do get away with it. There's been a couple of times, actually, that Frank sort of said it in press conferences as well, that, that the players haven't turned up. I've, I've given them instructions. They haven't quite followed those instructions. They haven't quite done it. And it, I think the players perhaps have seen some of those interviews and maybe not been happy with, mm. with Frank and some mm. of the stuff that he said in the press. He's not just done it once. He's done it three or four times. And I think the players are starting to get to a point or were starting to get to a point of, hang on a minute, why does he keep digging us out? But actually, you know, it is your responsibility. Yeah, yeah I think the players have to take as much responsibility as Frank. And he, and he will, I think his next job, he will manage that situation differently. Yeah. Because this is Chelsea, because it's so special to him, because he's got the club's absolute best interest at heart, deep down, it's part of the fabric of the place. Whereas I think he, he'll, he'll now bounce into his next job like other managers walking through the door. I don't have any allegiances to anyone you in here. You almost wonder if it's maybe been a bit harder for and him. And I'm going to do yeah. it my way. And that's what Thomas Tuchel will be coming through the yeah. door if he does get the job. It's going to be done my way. I don't care about this, that, history, whatever. Forget all that. I'm going to do exactly as I see fit. Whereas for someone like Frank at Chelsea, he's always carrying that burden a little bit of, of kind of having to do what's absolutely right by the club as well as maybe trying to make the right decisions for him as a manager. He'll have learnt a lot, that's for sure. He'll have <laughs> learnt tons. He'll have learnt an awful lot. Well, of course, Frank Lampard is no longer in the hot seat at Chelsea. Lots of rumours flying around about what next. Thomas Tuchel, as Andy has just said there, is set to be appointed, we believe. Let's catch up with the latest now. Our reporter for Charlie Bob, while she can tell us what we're likely to expect. Yes, it is set to be a busy day here at Stamford Bridge as Chelsea look to appoint and welcome Frank Lampard's successor, the German coach Thomas Tuchel, to the club. Now, he was sacked by PSG back in December. He's been out of work since then, but the plan for him today is to fly into London from Paris. He'll first have to return a negative COVID-19 test before being allowed into the country. But providing he does do that, he'll travel to Chelsea's training base at Cobham and he could even take charge of Chelsea training later on today before being formally announced as a new Chelsea boss on an 18-month deal. The plan for him then will be to attend Chelsea's match in the Premier League, which is tomorrow night here against Wolves. And I think the hope really for Tuchel is that he can try and get the best out of fellow Germans, Timo Werner and Kai Havertz, both of whom arrived at the club in the summer but collectively the aim really will be for him to get Chelsea back into the top four spots right now they sit in ninth place in the Premier League standing they sit five points behind those top four spots and the hope will be that Thomas Tuchel can also help Chelsea go far in both the Champions League and also the FA Cup so Thomas Tuchel it's going to be a busy day here at Stamford Bridge as he arrives at the club to replace the sacked Frank Lampard. Yeah, it does look like Thomas Tuchel is going to be unveiled as Chelsea bosses for Charlie Bobwatch has just told us then. Let's take a look at the fixtures that he will have during his first few weeks at the helm. These are Chelsea's next 10, as we've been talking about Chelsea versus Wolves. I know Matt is going to be lucky enough to be at that one on Wednesday night. Then Burnley, then a London derby against Spurs. But Andy, when you look at all of those fixtures, that does, of course, include the Barnsley and Atletico games in the Champions League and FA Cup. Yes. When you look at those fixtures, are they favourable, do well, you they, think? Well, they are. Uh, and I think certainly the next two two home games yeah. um, and uh, whenever they make a change whenever a club makes a change instantly invariably the fixtures coming up are winnable matches because they want their new coach to get the off new to manager a, bounce 